tomorrow it's five weeks to race day. So by this point in time, you should be pretty much at full volume. And if you haven't already done your extra long run, you should probably think about it doing it this weekend or very, very shortly thereafter. It's getting there. It's really, really close. So with that in mind, this afternoon, I'm going to give you a little bit of a walkthrough of the course and my thoughts on it, and maybe one or two hints and tips that will help you make the most of your race day. The race starts at Furman Field, just outside Cowro. There'll be a field with five or six hundred people in it, all running the race themselves. You can go to the bathroom. There's a coffee cart very often there as well, um, while you get ready to go to the, you know, the the start line and get on with it. I recommend personally uh, getting the bus. You drive to the finish line, you can leave your car there or nearby in the centre of Rotorua. You hop on the bus and it will drop you at Furman Field. Thinking back to when I was talking about drop bags the other day, uh, this is the point at which you have your start line drop bag where, uh, for example, I have a jacket to keep warm and I quite often have a Kindle or a book to read or something like that on the bus because the bus takes nearly an hour to get up to Kauro. Um, and then you can, when you're done with that, you can stuff all of that in a bag and drop it off and uh, go start your race. Shortly before the race starts, um, you'll be called uh, up to the start line um, and then the Tuharang Iwi will perform a haka before the start of the race and you'll have a, a, a couple of minutes before it all kicks off. There'll be a countdown from 10 and uh, then you'll, you'll, you'll crack on with it. Let's go everybody in the first kilometre or two of the race is still on essentially playing fields and runs along the side of a, of, a, of a golf course for a bit before you actually get it's nice and flat um, it's pretty quick now this is probably the first tip of the day is do not go out like a lunatic there are an awful lot of people who go out way 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 too fast um, at the start of the race um, and kind of burn themselves out now at this point we're looking at the video you can see i'm running with two or three people here who are pretty quick guys. So there's Andrew and there's Thomas. Um, both of these guys are sub 24 hour, 100 milers. They're fast guys. And you can see in front of us, there's probably more than a hundred people. Now, between us, we will take back probably 60 of the people in front of us before we get to the end of the race at Rotorua. A lot of these people will realize they're possibly going a little bit quick out at the start and they will slow down. Um, and they will pretend to have a much, much better race than the people who don't realise, keep on running like idiots um, until they probably get to somewhere between Atlot and Nokotaina and then fall to pieces completely. Tip number one, don't go out too fast. Once you've reached the end of this section, you'll then kind of transition onto some nice little singer track that will run alongside the, the river between Karo and Rotorua, and that will lead you through the forest. Once you're actually out into the forest itself, you'll spend probably about the next 40 kilometers on a mixture of trails and gravel roads. The going is good, so you'll want to make decent time, but it's really, really important that it's a very, very long way to Rotorua at this point. And so every minute that you overcook it is probably two or three minutes that you're gonna to have to add to your time on the back end. So keep your pace nice and sensible. Monitor your rated perceived exertion, how you feel within yourself. Also, if you've got a heart rate monitor, it's worth keeping an eye on your heart rate just to make sure you're not overcooking it. You'll also come through aid stations. Remember when we talked about aid stations? Have a plan. What are you going to do at this aid station? Have you got a drop back to pick up? Or are you just going to get in there, top up your water bottles, get out and get on with it. Thanks for coming out and helping. Cheers, guys. You may also, if this is your first time running Tarawira, consider going and jumping in the river to cool off a little bit. If it's a very, very hot day, the river can be absolutely fantastic. It's a great experience, especially if you're not really going for a dreadfully fast time and you're out to have a wonderful kind of day. Heads up, Thomas.
this is the real highlight of the course, which for me is the section kind of from the end of the roads a little bit before outlet through to um, the end of the Okatina walkway at Miller Road. It's fantastic to run on. The surface itself is mainly volcanic ash that you know, the forest has then grown up around and you're surrounded by this wonderful native bush that either by the river or by the lakes. It's really, really enjoyable. A couple of kilometres before you come to Outlet A station, you'll go past the falls. Uh, on this day, we've had a bit of rain previously, and it's really quite magnificent to look at. Well worth stopping to take a photo, enjoy the view just briefly before you head back on down the trail. You'll keep running on this largely non-technical single track for quite a while until you get to Outlet Aid Station. This is the first place where you can pick up a drop bag. Personally, I only tend to leave food at this aid station because okay. I think of, as I've said in previous videos, as the Okatina Aid Station as being the natural halfway point of the race, even though it's a bit further beyond. Yellow! Heading out of Outlet Aid Station, you're now on the Northern Tarawera Track. Uh, Northern Tarawera Track and the Western and Eastern Okatina really make up some of the most interesting and fun parts of the course for me. I think the key here really is just to try and maintain momentum. There are lots of very slightly technical sections and maybe a tree or two or some rocks you have to climb over. And so key to it is getting that done and then trying to make sure you get back into a nice sort of jog trot rhythm or good run if you're able to, because that's what's going to advance you through this section where an awful lot of people slow down quite considerably. After about six kilometres on the northern Tarawera track, you'll come to Humphreys Bay Campground. Um, there's also an aid station here. It's pretty minimalist usually, but you can run in, get a bit of water and, and head out, and it's not a place where you can leave a drop bag. After you've left Humphreys Bay Campsite, you're now on Eastern Okatina. This is quite interesting because there's lots of up and down bits and it's quite a fun place to run. The other challenge is that a few years ago there was a slip. And so now rather than being able to run straight through the course, which you were able to do last time I did it, as in the video in 20, 2020, you've actually got to take a short boat ride from a couple of hundred meters south of the Okatina aid station that will then you drop you at a little wharf right by Okatina itself. <laughs> I think of Okatina Road Station as the natural halfway point of the race, even though it's 58 kilometres into a 102 kilometre race. You've got slightly over a marathon to go, but it's the hardest section. Um, there's quite a significant uphill going out of Okatina, which you might just about be able to run on a training day, but once you're either 60 kilometres deep, in uh, the 102k or 120 kilometers deep in the miler, it really becomes quite a bit harder to maintain that kind of momentum. At its steepest point, it's probably only about maybe 15 to 20% grade, but it's still quite relentless over the total of five kilometers. Once you've done the steep section, there's a really, really nice long downhill into Miller Road that if you've got the legs to do it, you should be able to make up some decent time. But at this point, if you haven't got the legs to do it, it can unfortunately turn into a bit of a downhill grind just from the eccentric loading on your legs. Having come through Miller Road Aid Station, where you can't leave a drop bag, but you can get a drink, um, you head along the northernmost edge of Lake Okaraka and trail alongside the Okaraka Loop Road before you then do a circuit of Tiki Tapu, Blue Lake, and head into the Blue Lake Aid Station. The Blue Lake Aid Station is always a very welcome sight. You can replenish your supplies, you can leave a drop bag there, but it also tells you that with a half marathon to go, you've done the hardest sections of the course. After you've left Blue Lake Aid Station, you'll head up a gradual grass incline and back into forest. This is the Fakariwa Riva Forest, where you'll follow a set of trails and undulating gravel roads that will lead you to your final challenge, which is Tokarangi Pa. Now, this is no pushover, having done about 90 kilometers to this point, but having overcome that, you'll then drop down through the redwoods to your final aid station. The good news is that after the Redwoods Aid Station, you can be joined by any of your friends and family who may wish to run the final seven kilometers with you back to the finish line. The final section of the race will take you out of the Redwoods, across the main road, and then along the Sulphur Flats, which is an interesting area of geothermal activity. Then you hit a few back lanes before you finally hit the chute to the finish line. Congratulations, you just finished the Tarawera 102K. I hope that was useful to you and gave you some thoughts about how you can best manage your race to have the best 
most enjoyable, fastest possible day, whatever your goals might be. I got my run done, nine kilometers in, I don't know, 42, 43 minutes on flat gravel. I'm reasonably happy with that. Um, I'm hoping for a little bit better weather because the rain is starting to, to wear thin anyway. Hope your training is going really, really well. I look forward to seeing each and every one of you down in Rotorua in not very long at all now, five weeks. Good luck, guys and gals.